Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris, and today I will be putting together a little kit like this uh, that I got from eBay. More on this in a moment. Now, some say putting together kits that you've purchased somewhere is not very educational. Yes, uh, you'll make something to work most likely if, if everything goes well, but you're not going to learn much. With this, um, I hope this is going to be a little bit different because I want to fully understand how this little simple circuit works and I think it's quite interesting. So let me show you what it is and let's try to work out what's happening inside. Here is the bag of components and the schematic that I've printed out on a larger piece of paper so it's visible. But first things first, let me show you where this came from. So. It did come from eBay, as I said, and the cost for this was £1.76, which is very little. I've just looked up on Element 14, or one of the lot, and the IC alone is 50 pence. I, I'm actually struggling to understand how can they make any business out of this. This came from seller 100FYS, and the item number is 291-335-65076. It's worth mentioning that after I got this, uh, I looked at the seller. When you look at his items for sale, there is a lot to put together in a range of two or three pounds. Uh, he's got a ton of cool stuff. Let's try to work out what's happening here. So the main chip on the circuit is a CMOS CD4093, which is a for NAND gates but it's a special one and they're not your regular NAND gates. Those are NAND gates with Schmidt trigger. Any uh, logic gate, let's just use a NAND gate for, just for the sake of it, I'm gonna draw an ugly NAND gate over here. Looking at logic states, if it's uh, one and one, this will output zero. And if it's anything else, so zero, one, one, zero, or zero, zero, this will be outputting one. And that's how a NAND gate works. That's all fine and simple, thinking about just logic states. But in reality, this is actually analog. When you've got a change of state from 1 to 0, if we're talking about 5 volts logic levels, this will be 5 and then it will go 4.5, 4, 3, 2.5, and, and so on, down to 0 volts. And somewhere along this slope, the gate will actually transition, will start understanding this input level as a 0, not a 1 anymore. So somewhere along this line, somewhere midway, the change will happen. What happens if you've got a very noisy signal? The slope is very slow or it's a little bit undecisive. If the signal stays any time, any prolonged time around this level where it normally switches, that will cause problem because the output is undefined. It, will, it can be either one or a zero or it can oscillate. So that's why you have to do decisive either plus 5 volts if you're doing that on 5 volts logic or 3.3 volts or whatever that might be or a zero which would be zero volts half a volt or, or something along those lines there is always a, a margin you get the idea there is always that region which is a little bit uncertain schmidt trigger gates which have got a nice symbol like this in inside those actually do something really cool so they've got two levels when it's changing from 1 to a 0, for the gate to start reading this from 1 to a 0, the voltage would have to drop to maybe 1.5 volts. This will be where it switches over. On the opposite side slope, if it goes above 1.5 volts, it will remain as uh, reading this, it will keep reading this as a 0 state until it goes maybe to 3.5 volts. 3.5 volts and 1.5 volts region here basically ensures that the gate doesn't have this unknown state, this dark whole dark area where uh, it can output junk or where it's unstable and it starts oscillating or anything like that. Yeah, Schmidt triggers are commonly used for cleaning up noisy signals depending whether it's a falling or rising edge. They've got different trigger points where they change over from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. CD4093 has got four of those NAND gates and each of those gates over here is used differently. Now the this schematic just uses a rectangle with a Schmidt uh, symbol in the middle. Let's try to analyze what's going on. An infrared receiver diode here, an infrared transmitter diode. This section here and this section here 
are two separate parts of the circuit which um, actually work together VCC so that's plus 12 volts here we've got uh, just two filter caps the infrared receiver diode does not pass through any current um, unless it sees infrared at the right wavelength so if we consider this uh, diode is not receiving any infrared at the moment this would be an open circuit so what we have here is a Darlington array it's uh, two separate transistors but transistors set up in such a way that um, a meter of one goes into a base of another and then collectors are uh, bundled up together this is called a Darlington array and what this does is actually has got a really large uh, amplification it's very very sensitive if you think about it even the tiniest amount um, of base current um, on in the first transistor gets fed straight into the base of the other one so even the tiny amount here gets amplified by the first transistor and that amplified signal gets amplified by the second transistor if this is open circuit this here get pulled up to positive rail and the transistors are shut which then in turn produces a zero over here because this input of the gate is pulled down by this 200k resistor down to ground if this starts conducting through this capacitor a very short impulse will switch on momentarily those transistors well the first one and then the second one and then it will produce a one over here is an interesting part so this section over here so one gate capacitor two resistors and a diode and um, this forms an oscillator so this actually will oscillate this diode and this resistor is not necessary you can actually consider they're not being there at all and that will oscillate as well I'll explain the diode in a, and the resistor in a moment if you think about this because it's a Schmidt trigger gate if we look at time voltage at this point so on this capacitor at the very beginning and this gets pulled down to ground uh, through the capacitor so in turn will produce zero and zero which for an AND gate will produce an output of one so high voltage high state I guess not high voltage so the capacitor will start charging when it reaches the point where this starts reading the voltage here as a high state this will change to one and one and then the output will change to zero and through zero this capacitor will start discharging and the story repeats it will go up and down and again the output if we were to draw this um, this would be at zero so the output is high then it switches over the output is low then the output is high then the output is low and that's pretty much how it uh, how it works and that's how it oscillates now this diode and this transistor I thought about why have they put this in here but um, this is in order to change the pulse width of um, of the oscillation so if you think about it this one uh, this resistor is 82k when this is high when this is one charges slowly this capacitor uh, through a 82k resistor and it slowly charges up so the gate remains in a high state for a quite a long period of time but then when it's discharging it when this goes low it's discharging again through this resistor but also through this diode and a 22k resistor so the this falling edge will be a lot sharper so it will be rising a lot lower so effectively the impulse will be long uh, on the output will be long high short low long high short low and something along those lines so it's basically pulsing it when this is high base of this transistor here because it's a PNP transistor it need, the base need to be going needs to be going to the ground in order for the transistor to switch on so it the transistor remains switched off only when it goes zero so for those short per pulses over here the transistor switches on and through this resistor lights up infrared LED this gate over here is also connected to this transistor and it will read zero unless when this transistor is switched on only then it will get connected directly to VCC so only if this diode is emitting and this one is receiving at the same time this will produce a zero on the output if it produces a one or for any other 
combination, nothing happens because the output of this gate goes through a diode which would be reverse biased, which actually will not uh, pass any current, so nothing will happen. But when it's a zero, it will pull the two inputs of this gate down to zero, which then this will produce a one. If it's not doing that, two inputs are pre-biased by a 200k resistor here going to VCC. This basically becomes an inverter with a Schmidt trigger input and through this diode it will charge up this capacitor. Now there isn't any resistance in this circuit so the capacitor will charge up very quickly to a full charge. Because of this diode when this goes to zero it cannot discharge the capacitor anymore. The only way the capacitor will discharge is when it stops receiving a charge current from the output of this gate and it will discharge through those two resistors or one resistor and one pot and the pot uh, is very high value yeah it's a one meg ohm pot and this resistor is i think 6.8k so it means it will be discharging very very slowly what happens then once it's um, it's fully charged this will become a one so we output a zero over here and it will slowly start discharging up to a point where the gate will start reading this voltage as a zero which then it will produce a one by adjusting this pot you can basically adjust the amount of time it takes to discharge this capacitor thus increasing or decreasing the time that the circuit remains uh, switched on it will stay on for some time and then it will switch off the rest of it is quite simple and we've got um, if it's um, if this signal is a one nothing happens because a pnp transistor just like before but when it's a zero it will bias through this resistor bias the base of the transistor it will start conducting and it will bias this transistor in turn which is a npn so the current will go through the voltage drop on this resistor or this resistor divider over here at this point will be enough to switch on this transistor and this transistor in turn will start conducting so the current will flow from VCC through this diode so it will light up an indicator LED and also will light the, the current will go through the relay which is here through the magnetic coil and yeah activate the relay and that's the output of the entire circuit rectify a diode over here that's for protection so just in case someone connects the voltage backwards and uh, that will not blow up the chip or anything else on there that's all there is to it so that's the entire circuit and i think it's really interesting it's a clever way of you know using logic gates to create a time delay and oscillation and everything else and quite like this so let's look at the parts and put this thing together so i had this for a while on my shelf it was sitting and waiting for its destiny and i thought i'll better put this together because if it sits there any longer it will be forgotten and yeah i'll never put this together now in terms of schematic one more thing actually it's worth mentioning that because those are cmos gates they've got very high impedance on the input so in many cases they will not affect either this trans uh, capacitor over here in the oscillator uh, it will not affect it very much i.e the capacitor won't discharge through the input of the gate this uh, capacitor will not be discharging through the gate for any significant uh, with any significant current because yeah CMOS have got very high impedance here is the PCB and it's a rather nice PCB it's uh, actually FR4 with a silkscreen single-sided job it's got YQDIY on it, LIS2, that's the name of the kit, LIS-2, CD4093, a little socket for it, and a bunch of passives, a relay, indicator diode, uh, infrared transmitter diode, and the black one, the receiver diode. Best practice is to stuff it with the smallest components first, so I'm going to stuff in all the little resistors and diodes in first and here it is uh, most of the low profile parts are stuffed in so let's quickly solder this up that's done now the rest of the parts the IC socket now the CMOS parts are somewhat uh, static sensitive so that's why they provide you with a socket I normally skip them but uh, on this occasion I'm going to put it in 
why not? And there it is complete. And yes, let's see if it works. Now building something like this is, I must admit, not as satisfying if we etched our own board. Maybe it's just I'm going through a phase of etching and that gives me satisfaction. But yeah, um, building pre-made kit by someone is still satisfying, but just not as much. So I've got okay, 12 volts, the LED is on. Let's tweak the pot a little bit. Okay, that's a very short delay. But if we turn the pot a little bit further, it uh, still sees the Yeah, you need to have something in between the dials because now it doesn't see it, but as soon as I put something in front of it, it will come on. And we can tweak the pot even further. That will produce even longer delay. I think with the way this uh, kit is set up, you can have quite a few minutes delay, but if you wanted a bigger one, you just change this cap to a little bit higher. This is a 100 microfarad. You could put 220 or 470 microfarad and it would work fine still. You would have just longer periods of delay. So, a nice little circuit. I like it. And could be very useful. And just up to your imagination where you want to use it. I think that's going to be it. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this me waffling about on how the circuit works. And yeah, subscribe for more random electronics related stuff. For today, that's it. So, take care.